I'm Teresa Caraggio, and this is Yes and Russell Brand, where I affirm and elaborate on Russell's Under the Skin podcast. Today's is a response to number 170, Self-Awareness and Parenting with Philippa Perry. And my take on it is going to be, be the meanest mom ever. Your kids will thank you eventually. So I'm going to look at three different questions in particular. The first one is, does modeling work? Being an example of the behavior that you want your kids to emulate. The second is, is parenting harder than it should be? And if so, why? The third is, what are some of the best tricks that I learned uh, during my tenure as a full-time parent? Um, since I'm on the further end of that, I have three daughters who are all in their 20s. And so since my oldest is 29, it's been 30 years that how to parent has been a really important question in my uh, consciousness. And it will probably be another 30 that I'm considering that question if I live that long. So to start out with, I wanna say that Philippa is such a delightful person and her daughter so lucky to have her as a mom. Her curiosity about her daughter, uh, her way of experimenting in raising her, her gentleness with both her daughter and with herself and patience and understanding that age old wisdom of put your own oxygen mask on first. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all things that I think we can all learn from. And I, I want to say to any parent out there who is in the throes of it, as we all are, that your kids are exactly the way that they are supposed to be. You are exactly the parent for your children. There's a synergy as to why I think each of us has the parents that we have and it's in order to become the person that the world most needs us to be. So that when I listen to Russell talking about, uh, in his Shakespeare uh, performance, talking about his childhood, my heart breaks as a mom for seven-year-old Russell when he loses his mom to a pseudo stepdad uh, who then occupies and colonizes the house. Another part of me is so grateful for everything that Russell had to go through in his life in order to make him the person that he is now, a person that I feel we really need in the world. Um, speaking from, with all the nuance and from all the broken places that um, his upbringing gave him. So look at your kids as being in just the right place and that everything you do, including things you may look at as mistakes, as we all do, and recognize that they're all part of a greater, a greater plan, a greater good, um, and that maybe there's perfect parents out there. But if so, come on, our kids would be miserable with them. They are way too weird for that, right? So let's look at those three questions from a different angle. The first one, does modeling work? If you exemplify the behavior that you want your kids to uh, emulate, does that happen? Something that really puzzled me when my kids were little is that pretty much invariably, the brattiest kids had the most gentle, considerate, thoughtful, generous parents. I don't know why that was. For a while, since I had pretty contrarian kids, I toyed with the idea that maybe I should be the exact opposite of however I wanted them to turn out. 
I don't know. The second question, is parenting harder than it should be? The answer is absolutely yes. And here are the reasons that I've looked at for why that's true. First, it's seen in our society as a hobby, not a vocation, and certainly not a job. In any functional society, the purpose, your purpose is to raise the next generation. That's true for every animal species that there is, including humans. But in our economy, our purpose is to make the rich richer and raising the next generation is something that we do on the side at our own time, at our own expense, and it's certainly not the purpose of our society. What we really need is a feminine economy. A feminist economy, I think, is one in which women do men's work and get paid equally for it. I think we need the opposite. I think we need to have men doing women's work along with women. The second reason I look at is that it's the most countercultural thing you will ever do. What the culture wants, and by that I mean the system, is that you raise a bunch of little consumers who are going to be completely demanding about what they deserve and that your role is to get it for them. So if you're going to try to break that cycle and not be the servant of your kids, you're going to be going against media, uh, education, government. Um, and so that's, um, that's, I think, tricky. And, and that when you look at the use of power, there's one legitimate use of power over others, which is to give them power over themselves. As a parent, you need to use that power because kids are out to thwart themselves all the time. They are always getting in the way of their own best interest. So that's your countercultural job. Third is that it's the parent's responsibility to be eternally vigilant. Anything bad that happens is your fault because you should be doing nothing other than watching out all the time for all the terrible things that are out there ready to happen to your child and ready to be done to your child. And that is such an unnatural situation. At one point, uh, Russell suggests that maybe having small communities where we are watching out for each other and sharing in this would be the solution. And Philippa says, well, but what if they want to kill me? Now, I live in the U.S. and twice a week I read the drone report about who we've targeted that week um, and who we've been bombing and, you know, we admit to actually torturing. Um, we're the only country to have used nuclear weapons. We... Uh, I, th there's, there's just so much, so much I can go into, but in any case, the idea that they may be out to kill me is not my question. My question is, how can I get out of participating in killing them? So, um, smaller communities could only help in that way. Fourth, raising, raising kids these days is seen as a luxury. It's seen as kind of selfish. Um, environmentally, it's seen as using up more resources that if you are uh, a conscious person, you just don't have kids. So I think at that point, you've accepted your own right to exist, but you're not giving that to anyone else. You're not taking responsibility for anyone else. And so I think in that way, we're not 
as parents not getting the uh, psychological support also for the fact that we're doing something really, really, really hard that has been done for every adult and which, whether we're parents or not, we have a responsibility to pass on. And then uh, fifth, I think it's hard because we live in a competitive culture and every kid either wants to be the favorite or they don't want to try at all, in my experience. Now, I have used this to advantage, but um, I'll get into that in the, in the next one. But um, that makes it difficult because you're, what you have to convey to a kid, your, your uh, little paradox that you need to uh, get across is you are the most special person in the universe. And so is your sister. And so is everyone else. That is a difficult message uh, to, to get across, but that's your job. And then the last one is that kids are being mentored by 29 other kids who are exactly their same age. What our school system does is that it herds kids in a ratio of 30 kids to one adult. And so going back to every kid wanting to be the favorite, that gives one kid, you know, the ability to play up to the teacher and encourages the rest of them to just sort of give up and curry the favor of other kids exactly their own age. I don't think that's a very effective way for us to be uh, raising kids. So the last question is, what are the best tricks that I learned from other parents and from my own hard won experience? So in particular, having three daughters, what the people who I really sought out were other moms of three daughters who were just a little bit ahead of me, who were very savvy. And one of the best tricks that I learned was have one day a week when everyone cleans the house. Everyone does it together. No one stops until everyone's done. And you are training. You would be surprised how much a two-year-old can absorb and can actually get done if you expect that that's just part of their role in the household. The second one is don't let your oldest, this is especially for Laura, don't let your oldest daughter have play dates unless she brings her sister along. Here's the reason. Your oldest will be very popular. Everyone will want her to come over, especially if they have an only child, because it is much easier for them to have your daughter there too, because then that occupies their child. But what that's going to leave you with is a little sister who is imagining her sister having the time of her life and who is miserable, who you are going to have to provide an experience for that is equal to whatever she imagines her sister is doing. So that doesn't give you a break at all. It actually makes your job a whole lot harder. So just make that rule right now. Save yourself some trouble. Three competition is your friend. Here's why. There's a lot of times when our kids do not like us very much. But if you have more than one kid, the odds are one of them is liking you a little bit better than the other at that given moment. And then it switches. So if the one that's liking you is the one that you play up to, that gives the other one a little bit of incentive to just be a little bit nicer to you. Four, and this uh, I guess uh, somewhat contradicts what I just said, but some of the best advice I got and some of the hardest is if there's a kid that at that moment you're not particularly liking, spend more time with them. And it works as much as 
that may have not been the particular daughter that I wanted to go off and spend a weekend with, I came back in a different place. I came back with a relationship that had moved along in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a different path. And so when you, everything in you is just wanting to pull away, that's when you have to get closer. Five, you have to trick them into doing something good. You can, this self-esteem stuff, it doesn't work. They know it. They know it when you're praising them for, and they really haven't done anything worth praising for. So what you have to do is bribe, threat, and trick them, tricking is really the best, into doing something that's actually good. And then you praise the hell out of them. Catch them, catch them doing things right and play that up. Six, don't tolerate them treating you any way that you wouldn't treat them. Here's why I think this is so important, is that guilt makes people behave badly. And when your kids treat you badly, something in them is feeling guilty about that. They know. And what they then do is justify it, is justify it in their mind with why you really don't deserve for them to be treating you any better. So don't go in that direction. Make sure that they are needing to have a reciprocal relationship and to be treating you the same way that you want them to treat, to be treated. And then the last one is you need a system. <sighs> Parents don't have that many tools. We have physical force, which is frowned upon. We have threats and bribes, which are good, especially used in conjunction. And then we have manipulation, which is far and away the best. If you can get a kid to do what you want, and make them think that it's their idea, that is brilliant. But it takes so much work. I personally could not keep up without thinking what, as I told Russell on a Zoom call, are these Machiavellian midgets who have nothing better to do with their time other than figure out how to outwit us and get the thing that they want without doing the thing that we want. So you need to have some kind of system of reciprocity that keeps the amount of work fair within a family and that keeps everyone knowing that they have a way of, uh, of, of balancing things out. The word economy comes from economia, the Greek, which is management of the household. At one point, Russell asked uh, in, in one of the Zoom calls, I think he also often has brought up, whether with these self-managed communities, would has he dealt enough with his ego to be able to be trusted, to be in charge? My short answer to that is absolutely, because in a well-designed system, anyone can be in charge. Because what you do when you design the system is that you limit the amount of harm that someone who's corrupt or uh, inefficient or uh, incompetent can do. You make sure that it's both temporary and fixable. And then you take the amount of good that someone can do and you make sure that that's permanent and infinitely expandable. So you really could pick by lottery and you know be, be pretty safe that, um, that the assets that what what the community needs can't be harmed in any uh, permanent way. But in another way, I would actually say that Russell is not quite qualified yet. And that's because his kids are too young. I don't think that anyone should be making up the rules for a community until they've proven that they can make up the rules for a household. And and, and have them actually work, have their kids be an asset to the household. I don't care whether they're doctors, lawyers, soccer, you know, heroes, what, I don't care about any of that. What I care about is 
Do they know how to clean a toilet? Do they know how to pull a weed? Um, do they see when things need to be done? Do, are, they, are they able to take responsibility and be the people that you want to always have around because they're the ones that you can depend on? So that's my two cents on parenting. Thank you. If you're intrigued and would like to go deeper into these ideas, here's another video on a related theme. And if you'd like to delve into this entire area, here's a playlist. Thank you, and I would love it if you would subscribe.